a Martha Southgate. When it was bidding to host the 2008 Olympics, the Chinese government made a specific promise to open up the country to free media reporting. But during the protests in Tibetan areas that began in March, the government barred access to foreign reporters and cut telephone and internet service to prevent the world and their own citizens from witnessing what was happening. Since then, authorities in Tibetan areas have been confiscating mobile phones, cameras, fax machines, and computers, monitoring calls, censoring and blocking emails and internet content, and harassing Tibetans to prevent them from relaying information inside and outside of Tibet. Despite the restrictions on her work and her movements, Tsereng Wusa has been working to lift this veil of censorship, publishing several eyewitness accounts of events in Lhasa and other Tibetan cities in March. In retaliation for her efforts, her websites, already banned, were the target of attacks by hackers. On one, the home page was replaced by a fluttering Chinese flag and a message urging violence against her. The following is an excerpt from a piece she published online in June, entitled, The Fear in Lhasa as Felt in Beijing. WD is a Tibetan man who would be recognized as Tibetan even if he didn't wear Tibetan clothes. I only recently got to know him. I can't describe him in too much detail since he told me repeatedly, don't write who I am. I still want to go back to Lhasa. My ID card was recorded and they also took my picture. Don't write who I am or they'll find me. He's a young and handsome Amdo Tibetan, but his eyebrows were knotted by his many worries and he'd often look around suddenly as if frightened. Even so, he readily agreed to my request to interview him. This is WD speaking. I need to start with March 10th. About five o'clock that afternoon, when I just arrived at Makye Ame restaurant in the Barkor, I ran into a friend who told me that something had happened at Jokang Temple Square. We ran to see and saw eight people arrested and thrown into a police car. Four of them were monks. They were very young. Others told us that before we got there, some monks had already been arrested. The policemen were from Barkor police station and they beat people viciously. There were many onlookers. Some Tibet Tibetans said quietly, pity, pity. And a few old women were crying, covering their mouths. My friend used his cell phone to take pictures, but a policeman in plain clothes came over and snatched the camera away and confiscated it. We were very frightened. On the day of the 14th, I remember very clearly that I left at 11.20 in the morning, like any other day. When a few of my friends and I passed Ramoche Temple, many Tibetans were shouting and throwing stones at the soldiers. We were all stupefied. We heard somebody near us saying that for these last few days, there had been police cars at the gate of the temple, and just now some monks had rushed out to overturn the cars because they claimed that the cars were blocking the road to the monastery. Immediately, the policemen called armed units to assist them, and those armed police who had shields and sticks in their hands began to beat the monks. Tibetans on the streets couldn't bear to watch, so people began to demonstrate. A Tibetan peddler wanted to join them, but his wife exerted all her strength, dragging his arms and crying and pleading with him not to go. There were also a lot of girls who said to us, young man, are you still a Tibetan? If you are, come over and join us. And when we didn't join them, they spat on the ground and said scornfully, shame on you. To tell the truth, I felt horrible, but I didn't dare participate and just stood aside and watched. A few of my friends ran over and threw a stone, but immediately came back again. Wait, I interrupted. Do you think this was an organized, premeditated event? I swear on the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, it wasn't. W.D. sadly shook his head. Then people started pouring in, he continued. There are people from Amdo, Kam, and Lhasa. There are also a few monks. People walked around Temple Square twice, and as they were walking, they were shouting, Long live the Dalai Lama and free Tibet. They destroyed the shops owned by the Chinese and Chinese Muslims. Silk and satin from one shop was thrown out. Colorful bolts scattered all over the ground. Some people also tried to set fire to Barkor police station diagonally across from Jokang temple, but it wouldn't catch. Just after three o'clock, 
the special police came, 30 or 40 people all dressed in black. Only their eyes showed, and they held their guns high. I was at the entrance of North Barkar Street. I saw them rushing to Sulakong Square, throwing tear gas bombs into the crowd. People in the front were stopped and arrested. Then they fired and killed people, shooting them in the back. We were frightened and retreated up Barkor Street. It was right then, right in front of us, that a teenage girl picked up a stone and was about to throw it, and the special police fired at her, and the bullet pierced her throat. She fell straight down on the ground. At that time, I was maybe 10 or 20 meters away from her, and I saw it very clearly. Many people saw it. It was really horrible. I think she was only 17 or 18 years old. I realized WD was shivering. After a while, he began again. That girl fell on the ground, twitching and bleeding. Very soon, the car of the special police drove over. It looked like a Toyota 4500 in a dark color. The car stopped right in front of the girl, and two special policemen jumped out and threw the girl's corpse into the car. The car continued forward a little, then turned back. It is very strange that after the car drove back and forth, there was no blood on the ground. There wasn't even a blood stain. I'd never heard of this before. This was a police car, not a street cleaning car. But WD insisted on this, saying yes, not a street cleaning car, but just like a street cleaning car that completely cleans the blood on the ground. Can there be a new kind of police car that even has a function to clean the scene of the slaughter? Later, I searched for police cars for special units on the internet, and I found a police car that can spray water up and down as well as left and right. There are also cars equipped with supervision video cameras, which can revolve 360 degrees, and cars equipped with revolving platforms for tear gas cannons. But I still do not know whether they're police cars designed to clean bloodstains. Are there really such cars? Thank you.